Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway, and we are here with some news on the latest commit for the K-State basketball team. They are down to just three scholarships remaining because they made an addition in the portal. Well, not really the portal, but he's going to go into uh, how they quantify the class of 2024 because it's a junior college player out of Iowa, Ellsworth Community College, and a JUCO Division II All-American, Moby E.K. Garuka is coming to K-State, and uh, yes, Mitch Fortner has the pronunciation up on his Twitter. Mitch is also, depending on when you watch this, is either going to talk to the head coach that he had at Ellsworth Community College, or you can go back and listen to it, but go and do that. Also, I'll be the the lead act for that because I'm going on today in the 4 o'clock hour with Mitch and everybody. <laughs> but let's talk about this new ad for K-State because it's really intriguing. He's a, a 6'6 player that put up really good numbers last year. And obviously the D2 All-American is uh, is notable as well. And he can he can do a lot with his athleticism. This is kind of a, a lottery ticket play. I saw some, you know, bringing up Naquan Tomlin. Here's the one thing I'll say about the difference, though. Naquan Tomlin played Juco Division I at Chipola, who is one of the perennial powers always playing in Hutch every year. Like, that's the, the, the high end. Ellsworth is Division II, which some of you are probably going, there's Division II in junior college? Yes, there is. That's like Heston College or Highland or uh, Colby has a community college, I believe, uh, Northwest Kansas Tech or whatever they're called. Like, So there's slight differences. This is not like what Hutch Juco and Garden City and Cali and some of these others play. So it's an even bigger jump talent-wise than what Naquan Tomlin made coming to K-State. But really, I. I think as an individual player, the athleticism kind of speaks for itself with Moby. Yeah, I was one of those that had no idea that there was a Division Two of junior college. I was I, when I was trying to do research, and, and I say this about some other small schools, but holy cow, when you're in the Division Two junior college ranks, good luck finding any kind of information about anybody. Uh, but yeah, I was one that was like, huh. Had no idea. And believe but, it or not, there's actually a Division Three of JUCO, too. Uh, but I, I, yeah, I can't imagine what that looks like. You really do learn something every day, so keep that in mind for going forward. Uh, but I really like Moby E.K. Garuka. Like you said, freak athlete. And I think that that's the one thing that really kind of stands out the most. Because, t- to be honest, I'm not sure how some of the stuff that he did at the division two junior college level is going to translate because it just seemed like he was out athleting everybody, but EK Garuka plays angry can really get up and dunk on people. I, I hesitate a little bit to say how good of an athlete he is in comparison to where K state has been, but he is one of the more intriguing athletes that I think that K state has had in a really long time. Because I, I, I've i never seen somebody, even at a, a lower level like this, be able to get to the rim and be able to dunk as easily as E.K. Garuka did in a lot of his highlights. And, and the one pause that I would probably have, and, and this is where this is, he's a lottery ticket for probably a year or two and to see how he develops. But he's somebody where I, I'm just not sure if what the shooting looks like because he didn't really have to but he i will say on a small sample size yeah the, the the three point shooting he only took six he was three of six but at the end of the day the benefit is he was over 70 percent at the free throw line so yes. that that at least would give you some thought that hey maybe he's not going to be this three-point shooter but He's a guy that if he is on the floor, maybe he won't disrupt the rhythm and they can get him into the mindset of, hey, take the shot when it's there. Or just it can translate to other spots. Like it's helpful to have, you know, a good free throw shooter. You can at least kind of start to think, hey, we're working with something. Now, the line between 70%, you know, you can decide how impactful that really is. But I think it's significant to mention that. And I will say, like you talk about out-athleting everybody, that's really what junior college basketball at every level seems to turn yeah. into uh you know even the d1 stuff it's basically i'm either going to run down the floor and try and dunk on you or i'm going to jack up a three seven seconds into the shot clock like it's a fast pace like just trying to 
you know, outdo one of one another. But I, I think there are some translatable things here. And this is the kind of thing where we've talked about it with the last handful of commits. You you can take guys like this. And this is what you need to do to try and help build out a, a more round roster. We can get into it, you know, later on in the week or next week. But K-State still has three open scholarships, and they probably now need to get more into the mode of, okay, we know for sure this guy is going to play for us. Like, we can yeah. know day one he's on the floor because – Moby E.K. Garuka, I, I don't know that we really know what the plan is going to be here. Like, this is a total wild card where he sits and doesn't play at all this year, or maybe he is out there and playing, you know, five, ten minutes a game for K-State this season. I really don't know which way this one goes because, like we talked about, it's just so hard to, to say when the talent disparity between him and everybody he was playing against is so different. Yeah, he's a guy that I think has a really high ceiling, but probably a lower floor in the sense of you just don't know what to expect, which makes him a really intriguing like option because nobody really knows what to expect right now. And, and, and I will say that the thing that really intrigues me is his ability to get to the rim, like I talked about. And with the amount of shooters that K-State has, it, it should be a little bit easier for him to get to the rim and even in the non-dunks, I'm really impressed with his body control when he gets into the lane and shoots layups. Like he he's a fun prospect to really think about. And I think that he's really kind of just scratching the surface on what he can be. Uh, because he is uh from Nigeria and has spent some time in Ireland as well. Like he he has a very intriguing background, and I think that's what makes him so exciting as a prospect and it, it's not like k-state was necessarily like like in the driver's seat this whole time like they were the only school recruiting him i, I think that it's interesting to note too that like there were other division one programs involved oregon state was uh the closest to the high major level weird to say that oregon state is kind of just not really in the high major level anymore in basketball uh, but they were interested. St. Bonaventure was interested. I believe that East Carolina even hosted him on the visit. It's like other Division One schools saw this uh, prospect, E.K. Garuga, and really wanted to see what he could do at this level. So I think that that's and, interesting because you don't see a Division II junior college player get rid Yeah, well, and I would also say when you, you kind of look at and think about uh, those types of schools like East Carolina probably isn't looking at this the same way as K-State where you would think, hey, we'll bring a guy in like this to to kind of sit around and maybe he develops into something for us. I, I Like they would probably have the intention of, we think this guy can come and play immediately uh, and have some kind of impact. And there are certain like, there are things that you can look at and, and see that will translate. And it's not just a level thing, like some of the the pull-ups right there, like that's not bad touch. Now, again, highlights, uh, you're only going to get the good. But also, like, if you can dunk like that, you can dunk like that. We see him basically abusing his opponents yeah. uh, with with how he gets to the rim and finishes. And it's not just dunks. You can see a couple of the clips, too, that he's been able to get in there and finish with a lay-in through some difficulty. So I think this is one of those that you really don't lose anything by making this addition. And it's a good get by K-State because, like you said, there are other schools that are in play for him, and they no doubt probably were offering uh, or guaranteeing a much bigger role than what K State was. Uh, I'll I'll pose a, a fun question to you about Moby E.K. Garuka. Do you think that he or Michaela Rich will have more fun dunks in pregame? Well, I was going to say this is uh, this is going to be some good dunk contests going on between them. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I I think I I would I would probably go with the Kigaruka based off of what I've seen. <laughs> I, I think I, I would too. I think he has the uh, the better ability of doing something on his way there, like in a no defense type of situation. I we obviously Michaela Rich has proven himself in terms of when the game is going on and the ball is coming off the rim, he can really get you with a putback. Uh, but in terms of if like you're looking for a show, no defense, Kigaruka might be your guy. I think that I agree with that. Uh, he just, it's so easy, his athleticism. And I think that that's kind of what makes the, the highlight tape interesting too. Because sometimes you have guys that are just so freaky athletic, athletic wise 
that the game just looks super easy to them, and Ike Garuka is one of those. Uh, the other interesting thing that I will point out that it, it, there wasn't a lot of information on him out there, but I did find that he has a seven foot wingspan, and I think that that makes him an, an, an intriguing prospect as well, because I think that with his athleticism and with that wingspan, that he could be a pest for teams on defense if he really locks in and wants to be a high quality defender. Because he's six 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 seven, and with a seven foot wingspan, like that, that's like what you would dream of as an NBA kind of caliber defender with those intangibles and those uh, measurements. No doubt about it. It'll be interesting to see how K State uses him. Just a, a really intriguing addition to the roster. Starting to get some more of those, but now if you're K State, you really got to turn it on. You got to find some more guys that you know you can guarantee are going to be on the floor and playing minutes for you come the start of next season. And you certainly probably need a guy with some size that's going to be able to do that. So they're still lacking in that department. But that is uh, for another day because for now, K-State is one step closer to completing their roster. Moby Ikegaruka is a cat coming from Ellsworth Community College, a JUCO All-American. So that'll do it for us. For Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Vo. Thanks for watching K-State Online. For more on K-State football and basketball recruiting, head over to KSO, find us at On3, stay in the loop there. Plenty of stuff going on with official visitors for football on the horizon. And like we mentioned, basketball still trying to fill out a roster. So we're out of here. We'll talk to you again on Friday.